In this Getting Started with Python in Bluemix course, we now understand what the runtimes are, how to specify a build pack, we've created a development environment, we've created a virtual environment in which we can control the version of Python, the, the framework and any other bits and pieces. Now we're ready to start running, monitoring and deploying the application. So let's have a look at the manifest file for the Flask application. To deploy up, the key key parts are the name, the host, the domain. Importantly, the build pack. The build pack is one five four. And if we go back into the build packs on Bluemix, if we go into the releases and find one five four, which is the one we specified. Of course, we can specify any of the others as well. Just need to check that Python 351 is supported, and there it is, 351 on our Cloud Foundry stack. So we're okay. So our environment on our machine is going to be the same as our environment on Bluemix. Let's update the runtime to 351 for Flask and then for the Django project. and the manifest for the Django is okay so we will close those files and go back up onto Bluemix because I've already deployed this application so I need to just remove it well you can deploy an update, but what I want to do at this th stage is actually show you how the manifest file is all you need to be able to deploy your application. So I'll stop this instance. And get rid of it. Let's verify that it's gone. And it's no longer there. So now, when we push the application, it's, it's going to be created. First, of course, we need to run our application to make sure that there's nothing wrong with it. Let's have a look at the Flask environment. The proc files will describe how we're going to run this in Bluemix. It's the same way we run it locally. So Python, Watson, PY. Starts a HTTP server, an inbuilt HTTP server. And if we open up port 5000 on localhost, we'll get an error because the root has, is not be defined at the root level, we just have to specify the root for the application. We'll come back into that in in the next segment. For now we know there's an error, but it's a credentials error, so that's okay. So this Flask application is okay. Let's try the same in Django. If you remember in the manifest we start a run.sh so if you have a look at run.sh at the bottom the python manage py run server is how we start the server so we'll run that locally and our django app is now also running locally so that's running on 8000 so both these servers can be running simultaneously there's nothing to stop you they're listening on different ports and again because the app is not listening at the root level we get a page not found error otherwise at WL lang the application is is there and again we'll get this same invalid credentials which is okay which is what we're expecting at this stage however this has gone too smoothly so I need to create an error just to show you what kind of screens we'll get 
when an error is detected so let's just rename the template file in the Django project so the index template file that the application is looking for no longer exists let's just restart the Django server, I shouldn't have stopped it in the, but uh, it's ok just refresh the page and you'll now see a Django debug error it's the kind of error you get when you're running with debug mode when you're in production you won't get these because <laughs> You don't want to exp expose what this is showing. It's useful for debugging though. Let's correct that. refresh the page and the application is performing as we'd expect it to at this stage. Let's do something similar in uh, Flask because the debug pages for that debug error pages for that are slightly different again we'll make the same deliberate error with the template naming and here we are again uh, this error is easy to find otherwise if it's in your application you go down into the that trace. Let's correct our deliberate error. Refresh the page and again our application is performing as it expected to at this stage. So let's just go into the uh, the Flask environment here, and we're going to l connect up to the Bluemix region. This is the G GB region. We have to have logged out before because once you're logged in, you cannot change the region. You have to log out. In fact, once you're connected to a region, uh, even if you shut down the machine, you're still connected to that region. So you have to log off reconnect and so on. Here we're pushing the application and we can see as the application is being built the runtime is fetched and the stack is fetched the dependencies are fetched and so on. We can run a trace on the the, the application and the application is the, the name not the host. So we just uh, run the logs refresh the page in Bluemix to actually see the application and there's our application, it's running if we select it we can see in summary the overview of the application it's using the correct build pack and the route, the route at the top if we click that, that goes into our application of course we know nothing's running on the root, specify the right URL, we have the application and 
it's running as we expect it to at this stage. And we have the logs in our Flask environment. Now you're not going to be normally running traces. Normally your application is going to be okay. And you only want to look at the logs when something goes wrong. And for that, you have the recent option. So we'll just run this logs, CF logs command with the recent option. And there we are, we can see the the most recent log. So now we understand runtimes and build packs. We have a development environment uh, where we've controlled the the versions of uh, software and we also are now able to run and deploy the application in Bluemix and outside of Bluemix. So we're now ready to start adding in Watson services.